So facilitation, is it important? This book argues strongly yes, and often that people aren't trained about facilitation. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor, I love learning, I love trying to share knowledge. Let me summarise this book for you. So the goal of facilitation is really to reduce misinterpretations, miscommunications, misunderstandings, and actually harness the power of collaboration. And to facilitate, you first actually know how to interact and contract with your clients. And you want to enable and create a space that allows authentic, open and creative conversations to happen. You want to guide people through this reactivation process and it's actually trying to get them again to remember to ask original questions. Often we're all stuck in a rut of thinking a particular way and getting those original questions enables genuine dialogues and you can perhaps even find good ways forward even if there are underlying conflicts occurring between people that you're trying to facilitate. And facilitation can potentially even change how that organisation thinks. So what you want to do is aim to encourage creative thinking and that's supporting people to brainstorm, think about how collaboratively they can overcome problems. Really you want to focus on the why and create often a strategic plan that allows this organisation to continuously evolve, grow and you want a kind of living strategic plan, not something that sits on a shelf after the meeting's over and is never looked at again. So solution focused approaches you may hear mentioned and there's also an abundance mentality that we want to get people thinking with a creating a kind of collective sense of optimism and engagement. Because organisations at times just marginalise people who ask too many questions. They think they're a troublemaker, no promotion for you and you're not a team player, you're asking these tricky questions. They're the kind of people who if you're facilitating a group and you've got some people like that, fantastic, because it's those questions that can potentially move the group along to obtaining mutual benefit and action points. You may hear people say, well, most innovations, they're written on the back of an envelope, you know, that's the best thing that is. But in fact, that's missing a point because before you write your little um, master plan on the back of a napkin or whatever, often you've had a really detailed collaborative discussion and that's what you're trying to bring out in facilitation, really ignite the innovation through communication. I like the concept of the vacuum monster and this is really that if there's a void of information it automatically fills with something else and most of the time what it fills with is not useful and in fact often detrimental conflict causing information. And this vacuum monster is often made worse by attribution theory in which people attribute intent to other people's actions. And also generally they may have a self-serving bias, a fear of loss and an underlying tendency to put emotion above reason. That's us humans, that's what tends to happen. And this vacuum monster is indiscriminate. It can attack an individual, a group, even a whole nation. So therefore, what you're wanting to do is avoid a, vo a void, a void of information. So you want to keep people informed. And that's really good communication, I believe. Although this book would argue that it's good facilitation of communication. So really, show them the light so that they're not in the dark. Otherwise, they'll assume the worst. A group happens at different stages. It can form and ultimately it can then have some ups and downs along the way. And what you need to do when you're facilitating a group is quickly work out what, what stage is this group at? Because if it's at the stage of forming, that's when you need introductions and you may use the icebreaker. 
What I found interesting was that an icebreaker is actually a boat that goes through breaking up ice in Arctic regions, allowing other boats to pass easier. And in many ways, good facilitation needs the attributes to a good performing team. And in 2015, Google had some research performed by Rozovsky, and he found that there's five key dynamics in a team that make set successful teams apart from other teams. Psychological safety, dependability, structure and clarity, meaning of work, impact of work. A good facilitated process supports all these five elements, thus ensuring optimum conditions for that group to perform. I hope that you found that helpful. Feel free to comment below about your views on facilitation. Hope you like it and subscribe and I'll see you next time.